Come join us on May 17th and 18th. Jay Martin, CEO of Cambridge House, will be hosting the Vancouver Resource Investment Conference with former Prime Minister of Canada Stephen Harper and Felipe Calderon, the former President of Mexico, as guest speakers, and over 100 macro finance keynote speakers, including myself, 225 commodity investment opportunities, and over 5,000 investors. There's a chance to meet in person, share ideas, and see how the world is being redefined. Good morning, everyone. It's Andrew with The Market Mindset. Uh, we're joined with Robert Rolfing again, who's the executive chairman and CEO over at Desert Mountain Energy. We wanted to catch up with them. I know everyone's getting excited about production and, and everything moving forward, but we want to take a step back and just have Robert kind of teach me, explain to me some of the downhill drilling and what's it look like to go for gas, you know, specifically helium, what that looks like, because uh, there's a lot of questions that people have as far as environment, uh, water usage and whatnot. And we want to just go over that, make it a really interesting educational experience for everyone. So Robert, really appreciate you taking the time to walk us through this. Welcome. Welcome back. Hey, well, thank you. As I say, we've, uh, there's a lot of folks have been asking questions. So that's why we put together a little animation uh, just to help people because they're, they're not familiar with this, our business at all. Uh, or just very little. So I just thought, well, let's put this together. and We'll just have a little teaching moment and uh, help clarify things for people. So I appreciate the chance to do that. Excellent. Well, let's let's get going and take a peek here at uh, at the slides here. So I think you see this up here now, the drill, drilling a helium well, step by step. So when you first start out, you start by drilling at what's called a surface conductor. And basically that's just a short piece of pipe that's cemented into the ground. And that's what you uh, uh, attach the BOPs or the blowout preventer to. And that's so you can drill, you start drilling down. And then that gets uh, quick and that'll uh, get cemented into place. And so the gray, whenever you see on these slides, when you click on them for the folks, when they go on our website, uh, we'll have this on here and they can, they'll be able to see how the gray coming up the sides is what the cement is. It's not concrete, it's cement that gets pumped down through the pipe and up around the outside. And that just anchors it in. And then in the next slide is when we start, at, we drill down through the upper part of the fresh water. And it varies where you're at, but we try to go quite a few hundred feet through that to a specific zone that's dry underneath it. And that's a 12 and a quarter inch hole. And then inside of that, you put nine and five eighths uh, diameter steel casing, and then you cement it into place. Then when we go, that is all the required, that is required for everyone who drills out here. This is the kind of the first step minimum that you have to put steel casing, a surface casing it's called, and you have to go through the, the known potable or treatable water zone. Uh, there's everywhere that we have drilled thus far, we've only seen one aquifer. Now, if you get off off the central high that we normally are up on because we're going after gas, people can get into multiple uh, little zones, but basically that's all we have. It's just one fresh water zone. Then we drill after that, drill down to an uh, in-between depth. And basically that's an eight and three quarter inch hole. We put seven inch steel casing in it, and then we cement it. Uh, the state requirements you see here, it doesn't go all the way back to the surface. Now, the state requirements say you only have to have a 50-foot overlap on this. Well, we actually uh, go for more than that. So we're not trying to just isolate the brackish water zone. Uh, go to the next one. And this, uh, again the red arrow showing where the top of the state cementing requirements are. This is what we choose to do. And you'll see where we, when we run this, then we cement that all the way back to the surface. 
So we're not just protecting just the brackish water zone with one pipe. We're again, we're protecting the known freshwater zone above that. So now there's two sets of casing. And that's what the state, you know, that's what DME's requirements, that's what we do. Then when we drill down the state requirements, you know, when you run in, we run the open hole logs, get an idea of what's going on with the well log. Uh, this is the first time you run the well log. And then the state cementing requirements say you don't have to bring that intermediate casing, that long string, all the way back to the surface. State requirements say you can put 100 feet above that overlap there. So when we drill, DMEs, our cementing procedures, we go ahead, we run that in, and we cement the additional string all the way back to the surface. So now there's two sets of steel, two sets of cementing over the brackish water, and then the fresh water zone up above. Now the brackish water, there's sometimes uh, it could be construed, uh, even though I have yet to see any technology that can deal quite with all of the heavy metals that you find in the brackish water. It's not just slightly brackish. Uh, you know, it's not just a little salty. Uh, it basically is what we've seen in that has run as high as 538 parts per million of just salt. And then there's different types of salt. You can have, you can have manganese in it. Uh, you can have sodium, potassium, there's, uh, we've seen in some of the water tests, you've seen lead, selenium, cad, you know, you know, it's like all the little nasty things that they are known carcinogens. So we go the extra mile. I don't want to take a chance on it. Even though this does add a lot of significant cost to the well by putting all these extra strings all the way to the surface and cementing them. But that's what DME, our internal requirement. This is the way we do business. Not everybody does. And people want to know, well, where do you know where to, where to perforate at? Well, some of those open hole logs when we run them, this is actually out of one of the wells that we're working on right now. And we run a number of open hole and cased hole logs and we correlate them back to, uh, I've discussed before about having a mass spectrometer. And yeah. so you're sensing everything that's coming out, you're looking at samples. And so you, you have a real good idea of what's going on. Well, the, the purpose of that is then you keep real close tags on everything and then you correlate them back to exactly to all the well logs. So, you, you see in here where it says the cap rock, which is fairly thick on this zone, and then shows a water-free gas zone, and that cor it correlates back to the mass spectrometer. Most of the time, when we are merging the well logs and the uh, open hole uh, logs, the cased hole log, the drilling, and it's actual the geologic logs, uh, what you're getting record of all the cuttings and everything you can see exactly where you're at most of the time we're plus or minus six six inches to a foot so then you just correlate that electronically to make the logs match now when we go in and we perforate we run this in and that's where you so we perforate hole specific spot and that is to within uh, a hundredth of an inch and then we run in tubing and we put a packer, uh, and that's what the heavy black lines are on either side of the tubing. What that does, that further isolates anything coming up between the cement and the tubing. It's just an additional backup plan. Yep, there's the packer, and then the gas comes out, and the gas comes up inside the tubing. And this is the way we just choose to do it. It's not a requirement that everyone has to do it. And every state varies. There's a lot of differences from state to state. Uh, but this is, we feel that it's so important to protect the aquifers up here. 
Yeah, it does. It adds quite a few hundred thousand dollars worth of cost. It really does. It's not cheap, Andrew. Yes. But it, this is our mindset from the start. There is plenty of um, helium. And for what we're going for, we're not, we're not just doing a natural gas play, which has, unless, you know, like at the moment, price of natural gas is up. But eight months ago, price of natural gas was way, way, way down. A year and a half ago, you know, natural gas was selling for uh, under a dollar an MCF is what people were getting paid for crude uh, natural gas out in the field, the actual well producers. Today, it's up to, it varies where you're at in the United States, but it varies anywhere from uh, 285 to maybe four or five dollars. That's it. And they're selling it by the time you get to your house and you're, you're paying $20. Yes. 20 to 22 dollars in mcf and that's just the handling costs everybody in between i don't control that i have no control over that however when you look at what we're trying to do with helium this gets back andrew to why we're going to we're not dealing with in between people we're going to be dealing straight to the end users now we may end up dealing with some one of the larger marketeers that they may be coming in, they need to su support a contract or short term. And, and it may be a lower grade. Uh, and we can run we can run a varying number of grades, uh, the way the plants developed. So and we can match that and we probably will over time, there'll be a, a combination of different things. Sure. And with the pricing, you know, like the last time we spoke, and on our website, you know, we had it where we we're going to go with end users contract. Well, with all of the force mature that other people have put in place and they cancel the contracts and basically it's, if you want the product, pay for it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I'm not interested, as I said before, I'm not interested in trying to get the last dollar, the last buck out of everybody. That's just not good business, but I'm not no be signing five-year contracts either. No, no. That's the wonderful thing with having control over your own destiny and the entire being vertically integrated, having control of that whole uh, stream and process means there's a lot more money to, to play with, to use, but also control. But that gives you that ability to, to, to and, and the commitment to work with other stakeholders to say, listen, mm -hmm. we have a, a long-term vision and that involves not only our local communities and the environment, um, we don't mind spending a bit extra money here uh, to do that and to show everyone this is this is what we're doing. And I think that commitment uh, and acknowledgement going well and above any kind of regulations uh, speaks highly of, of the entire, like the management, the mission going forward and, you know, what uh, what you're doing and, and how you've assembled even people onto your board that want to work with you. And that's one that... It's not just giving lip service. There are people that greenwash and just give lip service. They greenwash this. They say that the walk doesn't match the talk. Yeah. And that's where we wanted to do this. And as we go forward and expand into other areas, it's really critical. And it's like how we go forward with the hydrogen. Uh, people want to say, well, what are you going to do with this right now? Or are you going to put it in a tank and store it? No. Now, there's some interesting things just in general about hydrogen. Uh, a lot of people are not aware of. Hydrogen only has a lifespan of 25 years. I did not know that. That's amazing. It's, so when you're finding hydrogen, it is currently being produced. Aha. It has to. And yes. depending on there's other how the isotopes that you're looking at and the ion, uh, we've already pretty well identified that what we are looking at is it would have to be pretty close to being currently generated. Uh, it looks to be extremely young, i.e. somewhere between six months to uh, no more than two years in age. Okay, yeah, wow. And that's the other thing. The older you get, you tend to get a lot more H2S, although it, it comes down to what we have identified for basically where it's being generated at and the formations it's going through tends to strip out any slight H2S. Again, you have to be very specific on a structure because there's a lot of H, there's a lot of hydrogen in Northeast Arizona. 
yeah, most of it that has been found thus far, well, all of it thus far until we found this, it's all has high H2S, it has a high sulfur content. Yes. And it smells, you know, so, and people will, what does that smell like? And it's like <laughs> rotten yeah. eggs. Yeah, you know, sour that, gas, yeah. Fumaroles, yeah. that's yes. what it is. So, and it, it costs a lot of money to deal with that. You know, so like when that's the other thing, when we're completing on this and in the future, when we go after wells that will specifically uh, produce hydrogen, you actually do a different type of mix on the cement across those zones. Yeah. And you use different type of pipe and the tubing, the final tubing that you produce uh, through will be chrome or it'll be glass line. I, there, there's a whole series of things that go into those type of productions. So at any rate, that I'm not trying to get too far flung, but I, if there, I know you and I have talked and you had so many people, exactly what is the difference on the wells? Yes. And so that's why I wanted to just say, you know, a little animation here on this so people have a better idea. Oh, now it makes sense. Boy, they're not just going half half ass yes. this, excuse me but it, it's like they're going all in on this to do it correctly yeah I, and, and there's nothing better than showing visually how that works where like the stoppers are where the cement goes so that people mm -hmm. realize listen this is specifically where we've gone above and beyond and uh i it's, i think it's important because it's not once again uh just saying something it's you're showing people that this is exactly what we're doing at this stage I'm sure moving down the line as well, it'll be at other things as well. We'll say, listen, we're willing to share with you and show you exactly what we're doing. And it will help. Uh, as I say, we've all, we already know other people who we are going to be adding over time. I've already selected a number of people. There's going to be further people added. And I think it's going to be exciting when we're able to announce some of those things. People will go like, how'd they pull that off? Well, part of it is, these are all really high quality ethical people. Yes. And they don't want to be associated with the fly by night company. No, we're not the largest company. It doesn't say Exxon Mobil or, you know, it's not some on the side of the truck. It's not that. It's not, we're not throwing money away. We're still well funded. We, we don't get into production and how we move forward with everything. Uh, it, it's fun for me to, when I can finally start making the announcements and say, well, this is what this is. And people are going, Oh, you mean he wasn't just out playing golf? Uh, no, <laughs> yeah. I haven't played golf in a long time. So. No. And that's why, I mean, it's great to do these educational pieces, get people excited. You know, it's coming, but everyone loves the big, huge stories of what's being done in the background. And, and we're going to love that conversation when we can talk about it. Uh, but this is important because, I mean, it, it, once again, it's been the same from the first time we talked to now. It's a commitment to all the stakeholders involved and doing the right thing and being able to make mm -hmm. money and profit uh, in a challenging environment, producing critical elements that, you know, particularly the U.S. needs. And uh, again, that's a whole key. It can be done. And, and it can be done cost effectively. Not yes. everything in the world works that way. For this specific thing that Desert Mountain Energy is doing, we can do it. There's no excuse why not to. None, in my mind. Perfect. Well, thanks so much, Robert. We really appreciate it. Thanks for helping me understand that as well so I can go out and tell people. But uh, very, very helpful for us to understand. And once again, it's that commitment to, to doing the right thing and to moving the company forward, not only to be very profitable, but once again, to be aligned with uh, a, a better vision for, for tomorrow. Yep. Thank you very much, Andrew. You have a great week. Take care, Robert. We'll talk to you again real soon. Bye.